Hey traders, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to show you guys a brand new feature that was added to PineScript recently, which allows us to split our plots between windows. So what I mean is here we have two indicators. I have an RSI oscillator, which is detecting overbought and oversold conditions. And then I have a chart companion script, which is plotting these signals directly onto the chart. These are two separate scripts that require two separate PineScript um, files, essentially. But just a few weeks ago, the PineScript developers added a new force overlay parameter to these functions that will force the output to display on the main chart pane even when the script occupies a separate pane. Don't tell me why it took them seven years or however long to implement this really, really helpful feature, but here it is, finally. So any script that plots into its own box, indicator box, like an oscillator, for example, is a great example, you no longer need a companion script to draw information onto the chart, we can use this force overlay parameter. So in today's video, I'm going to take this script of mine, this RSI um, signal script that is uh, open source on the TradingView script library, and we will merge these into one script using this holy matrimony of force overlay on plot functions. This makes me way happier than it should. <laughs> uh, let's get into it. Okay, here we go. We have both scripts updated to PineScript version 5 syntax. Now the tricky part is to merge them. So there's obviously going to be a lot of duplicated code in these scripts. If I open up the settings menu, they should both have identical settings. This top one will have some stop loss parameters, but the indicator settings will be identical. Here we go, pretty much identical. So I just need to copy uh, this code uh, from this chart script down into this script and convert all of the chart plots to have the force overlay true parameter uh, override. So let's do that. First of all, I'll copy all of this code into a notepad plus plus file. And now I can delete the script, open up the source code to this script. Now this old script uses some old outdated code that is no longer necessary, like converting pips to whole numbers here. So we'll get to that in a moment. But before we do that, for those of you who are just interested in how to use the overlay override and don't want to watch the rest of this video where I convert the candlestick detection and all of that into this oscillator script and, and overlay those plots. Let's just draw a plot shape whenever the RSI is overbought. So if RSI is overbought, we'll draw one, otherwise we'll draw NA. And before I do anything else, let's say force overlay equals true and we'll save my code. Oops, sorry, m my mistake. This should be by signal one, this is the overbought threshold, not the actual signal. So let me uh, change that. There we go. Perfect. Now that's amazing to me. I, I can't believe it took them this long to add this feature to PineScript. It's unbelievable to me. Uh, this is so useful. So this is an overbought condition with an engulfing candle. So the RSI goes overbought. We get a swing low engulfing candle. We are plotting a shape on that signal candle directly onto the chart using one script with an oscillator um, drawing as well. Amazing. No need for duplicating scripts to draw onto the chart and have everything drawn to a separate box. We can just use this one simple parameter. Uh, that's fantastic. That's all you really need to know about this parameter. But in the rest of this video, we are going to copy all of this code, all of this um, candlestick detection and everything and merge all of that into this indicator to make it actually useful indicator that draws stops and targets um, along with these um, signal detection plot shapes. So let's get into that. So this should really say indicator settings. And on top of this, I will add stops and target settings. And I'll copy over what we need here. So first we'll have a stop loss input. Um, and then we're going to have some risk reward parameters. And uh, let me tidy all of these up so they're a bit easier to follow. I'll square all of these off. Um, so we have a stop loss input, which is a multiplier of the ATR value. We have a risk reward profile, which is just a um, ratio. So by default, a one to one risk reward. So one pip stop loss, one pip target. Not that you'd have a stop and target that tight, but you get the idea. Same with break even. This will just draw a line for break even and um, trigger alerts whenever price action hits your break-even um, ratio. And then we have a, sh a Boolean input to turn on or off the break-even point. And that's almost 
all we need, the last setting here I'll add in, is this draw real time parameter. This will eliminate repainting or turn repainting on if that's what you want. So this will draw signals on a real time bar if it's enabled, which it is by default. If it's disabled, it will only draw signals on bars that are confirmed or signals that are confirmed. Or in other words, it will not repaint if this is turned off. So for now, um, oh, one last thing I'll do is copy over this group parameter for indicator settings to all of these parameters that will keep them all in their own separate little categories. So now if we open up the settings menu, we have our trade settings and our indicator settings in separate categories. All right, so now all we need to do is uh, apply this information to our signal detection and draw our stops and targets. And I'm just realizing we actually don't need to import my Zen library for anything because this stop loss algorithm is not something that um, I use anymore that um, is relevant to this lesson. It's to do with a different strategy altogether that isn't relevant for this video. So let's just skip that. It adds complexity we don't need. For now, we have everything we need. We have our ATR value, our risk reward profiles. All that's left to do is detect our signals, which we have done here. So now I can copy over all of my code from the chart script here that detects and draws our stops and targets. So what I'm going to do here is I'll change this to say uh, paint oscillator. And then I will copy and paste in our signal detection code. So we are calculating our stop loss in pips. Uh, I can get rid of this and just have stop size because we're not using that stop loss pip algorithm I just mentioned that is redundant and not relevant to the script. I do, however, need to get our ATR value and multiply that ATR value by our stop loss input. That will give us the ATR multiplied by this input. And that is our stop size that we add or subtract from the swing low of our signal or candlestick pattern. Um, let's save this code and see if this works. This should just work out of the box. Now it should be done. Um, and there we go. You can see if you look closely, we have our stops and targets drawing into this oscillator box, uh, which is skewing everything. And we do not want that. Obviously what we want to do is change this to say, uh, and I'll put an exclamation mark and say paint, um, trade info and exclamation mark paint oscillator. This will make it very clear that these are code blocks that are important and I can cut this trade stuff, paste it under the oscillator. In fact, let's change this to paint overlay. That makes more sense. And all of these functions now need the force overlay equals true added to them. So if I copy this and paste it into every single plot here, uh, there we go. Save my code. We should be done. Voila, look at that. Now I know this looked a little bit complicated because you guys aren't familiar with the script that I'm working with. Uh, some of you may be if you're in the mastery course and gone through all the lessons, uh, but most of you won't understand what all of this code does. But all you really need to know is that I had a companion script that was already um, using the same code as this oscillator to detect RSI overbought nervous hole conditions. It was detecting candlestick patterns in conjunction with that. That was, that all that code is included in the oscillator. What wasn't included was these stops and targets. That's the only thing that we've added to this oscillator script. The thing is, this is all now controlled by one script down here in its own window. I can change my um, stop loss size so I can double my stop loss is now two times the ATR from the swing high or low. I can uh, turn on my break even point, set that to one to one. And uh, let's extend my target to two to one. So risk reward ratio two to one. So now I have a stop loss that is two ATRs from the swing high a target that is what, and I've done this the wrong way around. Um, this needs to be two to one and this one to one. In fact, I'll swap these inputs because that's a bit confusing and counterintuitive if you ask me. Um, what we have now is a stop loss size as a multiplier of the ATR, a break even ratio from our entry. So let's set that to one to one and this profit target to two to one. So if I were trading this, I would enter my position at the close of this bar, or the open of this next bar, stop loss up here, 
take profit down here and I would set an alert on this blue line and if price hits that blue line I would move my stop loss to break even and wait for price to come down and hit my profit target you get the idea and that's all handled in one script both plots are handled in one script as always the source code of the script will be in the video description and the pinned comment below very cool stuff I hope you found this video interesting if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button hit the like button all that jazz and uh, it helps out the channel I really appreciate it obviously but I'm sick of saying it as every YouTuber is and I'm sure you're sick of hearing it. So I'll wrap this up here. Take care, best of luck with your trading and I'll speak with you soon. Goodbye. If you'd like to learn more about PineScript, check out our website. I have a completely free six hour PineScript basics course there, which explains the core fundamentals of Pine. And if you want to take your coding skills to the next level, check out my mastery course. We have over 50 hours of content and 50 plus five star reviews and growing. The PineScript Mastery course also comes with support where I can help answer any questions you have about PineScript coding. And of course, there's tons of free content on my YouTube channel. So if you're new to PineScript, go and check that out too.